right. So our next speaker will be Mr. Ken Smith. How to sign up a new Toastmaster. Since January, you've literally heard a speech a month on why you should invite people you know or meet to one of our Toastmaster meetings. Let's pretend for a moment that today you have a guest visiting our meeting. What's the next step? Take action. The most effective first step of taking action is to ask th these three questions. Number one, did you enjoy the meeting? And number two, do you have any questions? And number three, would you like to join? That's the one we normally don't say. Okay. Now that your guests would like to join our Toastmaster family, what do you do? The next step is to help them fill out a Toastmaster application. Here to take you step by step through the application process is our next speaker, our club treasurer, Ken Smith, with his speech, How to Sign Up a New Toastmaster. How to Sign Up a New Toastmaster, Mr. Ken Smith. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters. How many of you have helped someone fill out a Toastmaster application? Okay. To many, there is a problem with trying to figure out the money. And I, we're going to cover that in detail today. So this is going to be an exciting speech. You're, you're all going to stay awake through it, right? Yes. This speech is supposed to be 10 to 12 minutes, the speech project. But when I was told there were three speakers, could you do a five to seven, I said, okay. Now there are only two speakers, so it's going to be five plus, whatever it takes. <laughs> no more than 12, probably five to seven minutes. As mentioned in the introduction, you've heard a speech every month this this since January on how how to get new members or new guests to come to our club. The focus has always been to those getting a guest here. So today we're going to go a little different. We're going to sign up the guest. But I just wanted a quick review because I want you all to go to the YouTube list. You know where that is? <coughs> if you go to the four-week schedule, it's one of the tabs. It says YouTube. I've already bored one person out of the room. But starting with January, Conda gave one, Growing Early Words Toastmasters. In February, Arlinda did Finding New Members for our club. I want you to review all these. Arlinda gave another one in March. Closing the sale. Darlene gave the road leading to Toastmasters. Miley talked about the referral sales process. James in May did a 12 month goal achieved, and Gary selling a product, Toastmasters. So now we're going to give one final one for July, and that is signing them up. I would like, does anyone here have really good penmanship? Because I don't. <laughs> Eric, where are you? James, would you help me please? Absolutely. And there are some markers there, and you may choose the color of your preference. But I want to ask, first of all, what are the benefits people get out of Toastmasters? So we can have that in front of us throughout this process. And, special treat, we're going to carry this over into table topics. Yeah. So we want to, we want to leave this up there. Because what is a better summertime activity than recruiting and signing new members into our club? So, Jim. Yes, Ken. What is a benefit for someone to join Toastmasters? You start to speak better. Okay. Speak better. Conda? Develop self-confidence. There you go. Strong one. David? 
The benefit could be using your confidence and better speaking ability to attract new clients if you're in business there trying to attract go. clients. Excellent. It, it improves your financial well-being. Gary? You get a new family. <laughs> That's true. Oh, well. That's true. I consider everyone here a family member. Mm -hmm. Lee? Yes, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, what? what? What's the benefit of uh, being in a Toastmaster Club? Or specifically our Toastmaster Club? It leads to other things in Toastmasters. I did do have a speech problem, and I think being a Toastmaster has helped me become more adequate in being able to speak without too much of a problem with that. Right. Um, I, I know that you can do just about anything. I have eyes for James to do that, for definitely, for sure. Okay. Uh, character development. Character. All right. yeah, I think developing people. Arlinda? You get to practice leadership. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's two tracks, communication and leadership. And, and I've said many times that I consider them two sides of the same coin. What's the point in improving your communication skills if you're not going to use it? And using it is leading somebody someplace. It's either leading them to agree with you, to enjoy your storytelling, whatever it is. It's always got a purpose, and leadership is behind that purpose. Pam? Leadership. I think one of the great benefits that comes from Toastmasters is the art of listening because we all like to seem to like to talk even if we're shy about it but once we get over that then talking is not an issue anymore for most of us but I believe that listening is a skill <laughs> that is so underrated because we don't listen usually and so what I think happens when you develop that skill and you learn to do that in the Toastmasters because if you don't listen, you can't evaluate. So I think that that it's it's a jewel that Toastmaster gives us. And what it does is give us the opportunity to improve personal communication, business communication. It makes us better at everything if we're actually listening to people talking to us and not trying to talk over them or, you know, to, to, to formulate something. So I think the listening skills are invaluable that Toastmasters have. I agree. It's not just being the speech evaluator. You have to listen for the odds to be the off counter. You have to listen to the English language to be the grammarian and so on. In fact, in the leadership manual, it's the very first project is your listening skills. And if you recall, those of you who were here in December, we sang the 10 skills of leadership. Yeah. The first skill of leadership Toastmasters taught to me was to listen to the speaker carefully. <laughs> <laughs> and James. Well, along with right? listening skills, with interaction skills, how do you address an audience but also how to be in the audience and have a bright face, a smile when you look back at somebody that's genuine and that actually brings that conversation out of somebody and it catches. I mean, you, you sit and you talk to somebody and they're smiling and they're looking back at you, you naturally have a lot more to say. Right. So there's a physical aspect mm -hmm. to communicating. Um, yeah, we're, we're just going to go on. Forget the red light. Okay. <laughs> What we're going to move into now is actually filling out an application. So please take two and pass around. You're going to fill one out and you're going to somewhere keep the other one for that prospect that you run across next. And of course these forms are available for free on Toastmasters International site. They do not come pre-printed with early words at the top, but you can, they, they come as a form that you can fill in all the information on your computer and then print it out, or you can just print it out in hand and write, and that's what we're going to do here. So starting with, at the very top, we have the information in this 
particular case already filled in for 2056, District 57, Early Works Toastmaster. So you don't have to memorize that at this time. What kind of membership is the person taking? And I have several forms already in my computer. The default is new. But you can change that. Is it somebody who is in another Toastmaster club, such as Pam, who decided that she wants more speaking opportunities and learning opportunities, so she joined a second club? That would be dual membership. And then we have people such as Dennis Owen, who has to speak for Cathay Pacific Airlines all around the world, but every well, almost every summer, he wasn't able to do this summer, he comes back to this club to refresh his speaking skills. So he would be a reinstated member. But let, let's not focus on those. Right now we're going to talk about a new membership. So fill in somebody's last name right now, please, on just above the line, just above where it says last name, and then first name. You may or may not add a middle initial or name, and then is it male or female? And then fill in an address. The street address is on address line one. And hopefully this is someone who you're thinking about actually asking to join Toastmasters. So I'd like you to build that groove into your brain here. City, state, probably California, and zip. You can sponsor people everywhere. They, you don't have to be sponsoring people into this club, but this club really does need it. But Toastmasters International gives awards for the number of people you sponsor each year. Yeah, and Toastmaster year is July through June. <coughs> so you get a pin if you sponsor five. You get something else, I don't recall what it is, if you sponsor ten. And you can get the men get a tie, the women get a scarf. It says Toastmaster on when you sponsor fifteen or more. So if you know people elsewhere who you think would benefit from this, go ahead and invite them to a Toastmaster club near them. Home phone, mobile phone, work phone, all the contact information we can get about them makes it easier for us to follow up. And then put down an email address. And now we get to the money part of it, which for many people is the confusing part. I've already filled in one new member fee that's always $20, unless Toastmasters changes it sometime in the future. They finally settled on a $1.60 tax everywhere in California. You know, California has many different districts that make it 8.4, 8.2, whatever. They, they're all over the map. But, but they worked it out with the franchise tax. Private. Tax board. board uh, tax board. Equalization. Equalization. Oh, equalization. So that, yeah. that they can just collect a dollar sixty <clears throat> for everyone in California. Now, mem membership dues, all members, begin date right in July 2014. And then below that, you see the months listed. We prorate over a six month term because dues are due. Normally, in set, uh, by October 1st and by April 1st. So we want to get everyone, no matter when they join, on track. So we prorate their initial dues. So you would check July, and you look across, it says $18. And so the line, the third line for money, you would write in $18. And then you add that, those three up, and that's whatever. Thirty-nine sixty, and then you bring that down to the club dues worksheet. Thirty-nine sixty is on the first line because that's what was on the total of lines one, one A, and two. 
and then we have a ten dollar new member fee and then club dues are prorated exactly the way Toastmaster International dues are prorated. So since it was 18 for July there, it's 18 for July here. And what does that add up to? 67.60. Now how do they pay? Toastmasters can accept credit cards. However, they cannot accept our club dues and fees on it, or, the, or I'll take that back. They can accept them, but they don't give them to us. <laughs> they keep it. So we, for simplicity's sake, we just have the member pay us directly for the whole 6760, and since we do not have a merchant account, we cannot directly accept a credit card. However, we, they can pay by credit card through PayPal. Just go to www.paypal.com and send it to cbt2056 at gmail.com. I, I just put that on the line there by credit card so that people have that as a reference. But they can also pay by check. Do they have to be a PayPal member to pay by PayPal? No. You can, you can log in as a guest. You, do, you have to give them their credit card and tell them who you're sending the money to. And they, they ding your credit card for the amount and, and uh, and there's no additional fee on top of that for them. It is for the merchant costs in this case, where it is 2%, something like that it is. That is a better way than to tell a person you know, who, who doesn't have the money in a checking account or, or not scheduled in their budget in the checking account. They can add it to their credit card instead. And does our club end up absorbing that fee? Or can yeah. We don't pass part of that on to the international? No. No, we, we lose the uh, 2%, but it's... Yeah, are you going to explain the like, two times of the year that uh, the dues are due and how much we're going to be paying individually on okay. that? Yeah, since I'm no longer limited by the clock. Well, yeah, uh, yes. I mean, that's not important. Yes, I mean, yes, it is. Especially. In September, we collect for the October through March, and that's $72. So that's that's 70. 36 for international, 36 for us. Because we're per person. Per person. And then in March, again, we collect for the April through September dues period. Which is $72. Again, $72. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow. Wow. So, for <laughs> less than $150 a year, you get the benefit of being able to attend and learn every week throughout the year, with the exception usually of the week between Christmas and New Year's. Backside. To gain benefit from Toastmasters keeping track of how many people you have helped bring into the Toastmaster organization, you put your name and <coughs> home club number and your member number, if you know what it is. I happen to keep a record of everyone's, so you can always ask me. But you can also just look on the label of the Toastmaster magazine you receive every month. Your membership number is there. So you want to put in your sponsor, yourself as the sponsor, each, each one you sign. And then, the most important part of the whole thing is their signature on the back, because everything was a waste of time if they don't sign. So down at the bottom, you want them to sign. Now they are signing, and you've heard in our inductions that they are agreeing to the Postmaster Promise. And see that gray area on that side? Those are the 10 things they're agreeing to. So you might want to have them take a look over that before they've signed to make sure that they're aware that they are committed to attending the club on a regular basis, participating in it, Serving as an officer at some point if, if asked to do so and, and it works with their schedules and so on. And then lastly, you turn that signed application over to moi. Because I'm the club treasurer and I'm the one who processes the application into Toastmasters. Any questions on that? No. All right, let's do it. Let's invite you out here and you know how to sign them up now. Adam Toastmaster.